Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters and respected elders, welcome to another one of our videos where we share with you the stories that many Muslims don't know about. And inshallah, today we will be discussing about Prophet Ilyas, peace be upon him. And I have here with me Brother Lotfi Jafar. Assalamu alaikum, my brother. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can you tell us, please, about Prophet Ilyas, peace be upon him? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa barik ala of the Nabiyyina wal Mursaleen, Muhammad bin Abdullah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we send our salutations and prayers up on his final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam all of his family members and all of his companions and all of those who follow them with righteousness until the day of judgment. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ilyas alayhi salam is one of the prophets of Allah which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent specifically to the children of Israel. And one thing that I would want to uh, remind our viewers, often we say the children of Israel. We said that in the previous episodes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bani Israel al Quran, the offsprings of Israel. Israel is one of the Anbiya of Allah alayhi salam. And he is Ya'qub, Jacob, mm -hmm. the father of Yusuf alayhi salam, the famous prophet of Allah Yusuf, and the son of Ishaq alayhi salam. So he is a father of a prophet. He is a son of a prophet and a grandson of a great prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. So he's the grandson of Ibrahim, the son of Ishaq, and the father of, of Yusuf alayhi salam ajma'in. So this is who Israel is Ya'qub alayhi salam. Now let's go back to Ilyas. So Ilyas is from the offsprings of Israel alayhi salam as well as Ibrahim. Allah sent him. Uh, in the Middle East, it is said in Syria, in Hisham, the north part of Syria, he was there, alayhi salam. Um, Allah mentioned Ilyas in the Quran twice. In Surah al safat he mentioned him in a number of verses. And in Surah Al-An'am, Allah mentioned him as he says, وَزَكَرِيَّ وَيَحْيَ وَعِيسَ وَإِلْيَاسَ كُلٌّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Allah was praising the prophets. He mentioned many prophets in, in, that, uh, in that chapter. And he says, amongst this prophet is Zakaria, Yahya, Isa, and Ilyas. They were all righteous prophets from Allah. So this is the first verse where Ilyas is mentioned. However, in Surah Al-Safat, Allah mentioned at least um, nearly 10 verses talking about Ilyas. I'm going to narrate to you this verse, inshallah ta'ala, and try and translate them, and then later we comment, inshallah ta'ala. بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإن إلياس لمن المرسلين And surely Ilyas is from the messengers of Allah. After Allah spoke about Musa and Harun, right before Ilyas in this surah, spoke about Musa, his brother Harun, right before that he spoke about Ishaq, Right before that, he spoke about Ibrahim and Ismail, you know, when he was about to sacrifice him, and then Allah sent down a ram. And Allah before that spoke about Nuh, alayhi salam. And then after Ilyas, he spoke about Lot and Yunus, and so on and so forth. So in here, he's speaking about Ilyas. And Ilyas is one of the messengers of Allah too. إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Remember, or narrate to the people when Ilyas told his people, Don't you fear Allah? Don't you have taqwa? Don't you have piety? So he's addressing them in this manner because they were sinning. They were disobeying Allah. And we'll find out how. He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, what Ilyas was saying to his people, أَتَدْعُونَ بَعْلًا وَتَذَرُونَ أَحْسَنَ الْخَالِقِينَ Are you invoking? Are you supplicating to Ba'al? And you turn away and you ignore the best Creator, you ignore Allah, the one who creates you and creates what you worship and creates everything around you. You're ignoring him and you are worshiping Baal. Baal, according to Abdullah ibn Abbas, it was uh, Rabb, um, a sanam, a fake god that some people were worshiping 
where Elias was from عليه السلام in the Middle East. He said, are you worshiping Baal and you ignore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And then he went on to remind them who Allah is. Allah rabbakum wa rabba abaikum al awwaleen. Allah is your Lord and the Lord of your forefathers. He's the one who deserves to be worshipped. Because ma'na rabb, the meaning of rabb, Lord, he's the one who uh, nurtures you. He's the one who provides for you. He's the one who protects you. He's the one who... Uh, gives you sustenance and maintains everything you need for you to survive and to carry on your tasks. So he blesses you and he does all of this and you reject him. He's your Rabb and the Rabb of your forefathers. What did they say to him? They rejected him and they disbelieved in his message. Allah promised that they will be brought before Allah on the Day of Judgment the punishment of Allah, to the judgment of Allah because of rejecting Elias alayhi salam. Illa ibad Allah al-mukhlasin. They will all be brought to Allah to be judged for that uh, rejection of their prophets except those who were chosen, except those who followed Elias alayhi salam and obeyed him. They will be what? Safe. وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرِينَ and we left for him a word of praise among the people who will come after. After Elias died, السلام, he left a legacy. Now we don't remember Elias except in a good way. A righteous prophet, a man who carried the banner of monotheism, Tawheed. A man who challenged the pagans who were worshipping other than Allah. That's how we remember Elias. And generations came after him. They all praised Elias alayhi salam. This is why it means Allah left for him a good praise. وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْأَخِيرِ سَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ إِلْيَاسِينَ Ilyasin here again means Elias. It means Elias. Peace be upon Elias, Allah is saying. For the hard work he did for the sake of Allah. For the message he delivered correctly from Allah to his people. إِنَّ كَذَلِكَ نَجْزِي الْمُحْسِنِينَ This is how Allah rewards the people who do ihsan, the righteous, the pious. He will leave a good legacy. He will leave a good mansion for you, an example. He will prepare for you Jannah on the Day of Judgment. Indeed, he is from among, he is from uh, the believing servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah bears witness that Elias was muhsin and was a believer. Alayhi afdal salati wa taslim. So that's what Allah mentioned about Elias in Surah al safat Now, brothers since Islam, Abdullah bin Abbas, the cousin of our Rasul, he says, Elias is the uncle of Liyasa'. Liyasa' is another prophet who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. He didn't mention his story, but he mentioned his name more than once in the Quran al karim And we'll come to his story, inshallah ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Liyasa', maybe after this story, we'll come to the story of Liyasa', inshallah ta'ala. So according to Abdullah bin Abbas, Liyasa' is the nephew of Elias alayhi salam and his student. So when Elias died, Elias took the leadership of prophethood after his uncle, after his uncle Elias alayhi salam. And of course, Elias was sent to the children of, of Israel. Um, after Musa died, Yusha, mm -hmm. and we spoke about Yusha last time, he took the leadership after Musa and Harun alayhi salam passed away. Okay, he conquered Bayt al Maqdis successfully by the grace of Allah. And then after Yusha died, it is reported to us that Hazqil or Hazqiyal, mm -hmm. another prophet came, uh, led after Yusha alayhi salam, the children of Israel. After Hazqil passed away, lots of corruption took place within the community of Israel, children of Israel. Lots of corruption happened there. And they forgot the pledge they gave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they deviated and lots of them worshipped idols, asnam, statues. What did Allah do after they did that? He sent Elias and Elias challenged them. He said, أَتَدْعُونَ بَعْلًا وَتَذَرُونَ أَحْسَنَ الْخَالِقِينَ أَلَّهَ رَبَّكُمْ وَرَبَّ آبَائِكُمُ الْأَوَّلِينَ Do you worship Ba'al, this statue, and you leave your creator, Jalla Fi'ulah? Your Lord and the Lord of your forefathers. So Elias alayhi salam delivered the message of Allah and after Elias passed away, his nephew, according to Abdullah al-Abbas, 
took this mission and continued the teaching of the Torah which Musa السلام, left and the Anbiya after Musa left to one another السلام, thousands of prophets came thousands of prophets came after after Yaqub السلام, and they're all the children of of Israel Yaqub from his offsprings mm-hmm. uh, Ilyas the ulama they say as we mentioned and Nabi from the Anbiya of the children of Israel uh, he's from the offspring specifically of Harun, the brother of Musa This is what our scholars say, the offsprings of, of Musa. And there isn't, there isn't a very, very long time between Musa, Harun uh, and Elias. We don't know exactly, but it doesn't have to be like thousands of years, maybe centuries or years, Allah Ta'ala exactly, Allah Ta'ala alam exactly how long, but not many, many, many years or centuries, Allah Ta'ala alam. So he's from the offsprings of of Harun alayhi salam. However, there is an opinion of Abdullah bin Mas'ud, the famous companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallam. He sees that Ilyas is who? Is Idris. He sees that Ilyas is Idris, and Idris is Ilyas. It's just different names, mm-hmm. but they are one Prophet. However, this opinion, according to uh, other Sahaba and Mufassirin, it's invalid. Ilyas is Ilyas and Idris came way before Ilyas alayhi salam. It is said before Nuh alayhi salam. He came. Centuries be- gap between them. Wallahu ta'ala alam exactly. But we know for sure that Ilyas is a prophet and Idris is another prophet. Alayhi sure. musalamu ajma'in. So um, there is some, some Israeliyat that uh, the scholars of Tafsir reported to us concerning the story of Ilyas, i.e. some details about it, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to the north of uh, Syria somewhere there. And what happened? Uh, they used to worship this idol we mentioned, Baal. Uh, so he called them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he warned them not to associate any partners with Allah. Uh, and then their king, their king there, believed in him, believed in him. And then, however, he apostated, he left. He rejected that faith again. And they continued in their misguidance. And no one amongst them believed in him, in Ilyas And then he made dua against them. He made dua against them. And what happened? What, What happened? Allah, he made dua to Allah against them for no rain, drought took place for 30 long years, non-stop drought. So what did they do? They went to him again, begging him, can you ask Allah to rain the rain for us? We're dying, starvation, there's no crops, there's no food. And they promised that they would believe if he, if he asks Allah to rain, the rain. So it rained, okay? The rain came down, they were provided with what they asked for. However, they rejected and they deviated again. They continued in their arrogance and pride and disbelief. And then what did he do? He asked Allah again to stop those provisions, to stop blessing them with rain and so on and so forth. Um, And at that time, al yasa according to Abdul ibn Abbas, is his nephew, he was brought up by Ilyas, and he trained him to be a leader, okay? Um, and then it is said that Ilyas was ordered to go somewhere, to a specific place, and then when he came to that place, uh, he was told, any beast that would come to you, get on it, and don't fear it. It doesn't matter what it is. You go to that place, a beast will be waiting for you, you embark on it, okay? And don't fear this beast that will fly with you. And then uh, a fire came, fire is like an animal of fire, okay? And then he got on it, and then Allah made him wear nur, light, garment of light, of nur, and uh, feathers, you know, uh, fur, clothes, Mm -hmm. he made him wear something like that. And he used to fly with the angels. So he was an angel and he was what? A human being. Okay? Samawiyan ardiyan, in the heavens and on earth. This is what Ahlul Kitab say. This is what some Christians and some Jews claim. What happened to Elias after he left? After he passed his mission to, 
to Eliasa. But of course, we don't believe in that and we don't necessarily deny it. We stick to what the Quran narrated to us. Elias died, normal death. Quran didn't specify what that died. Of course, everybody dies. But according to this ayat, Allah left a good praise for Elias for the people to come after him. Okay. And Allah says, peace be upon Elias and he will be rewarded. So that's what we believe in what the Quran came with and the authentic Sunnah. As for what I just read now, it's not from the Sunnah, it's just from some books of the Tafsir of the scholars and it is not necessary, authentic. This is the story of Elias alayhi salam in the Quran al-Karim, specifically in Surat, in Surat al-Safat. Barakallahu feekum jami'an. Jazakallah khair, my brother. That was beautifully narrated and we've learned the story about Prophet Elias, peace be upon him. So my dear brothers and sisters, make sure you listen to it, but also make sure you share it with your brothers and sisters so they can benefit as well, inshallah. We'll join you again on the next series of the stories of the prophets many Muslims don't know about. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.